Welcome to the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast. I'm Tim Young. This is brought to you by American Greatness. And of course, shout out to our sponsor, Cigars Direct. It's their 25th anniversary. You can go get a special set of cigars from them, their 25th anniversary, Carrillo Pledge Figurados. Also, if you want to go get all the things that you could possibly want, they've got five packs and samplers. See, look, I can check you through their website there. You've got limited editions. Everything you can think of. My internet's really slow in my bourbon room today. And you've got humidors, you've got cutters, you've got everything you could possibly want. Look at that. Ashtrays, lighters, cutters, cases, humidifiers, lighter cutter sets. they got everything you can think of, and even punches. Whatever you need for your cigars and your collection. If you're a novice, if you're an expert, you're going to want to go to CigarsDirect.com. All right, let's get into it. Last night, or whenever you're seeing this, it might be two nights from now. Uh, the was the presidential debate, the fourth GOP primary debate. Uh, if you don't care about it, listen, I watched it so we can give you the highlights. I will say this. The moderator, I think, was the big winner, Megyn Kelly, also Donald Trump. But I wanted to do something different. And I wanted to see. Now, I have not looked at what they've listed as highlights yet. But I wanted to see what MSNBC pulled out as highlights because I think it's a little different. Let's see what the... The left is screaming about as their highlights for this thing. I think it's going to be interesting. Shall we pull it up and watch together? Here we go. This is from MSNBC's YouTube page. Let's go. Results. That's what we need for this country. I'll start here. I have delivered results. That's what we need for this country. And you have other candidates up here like Nikki Haley. She caves anytime the left comes after her, anytime the media comes after her. Very true. I did a bill in Florida to stop the gender mutilation of minors. It's child abuse and it's wrong. She opposes that bill. That I'm, is the truth. I we never have it, said We have that. it on video. I said, that I said that if you have to be 18 to get a tattoo, you should have to be 18 to have anything done to change you said your the gender. law should stay out of it. I think the Hold on. I can actually, before we move on, I have that clip pulled where she actually says the law should stay out of it. Let me see if I can get this right now for you. Because I, I watched this last night, and she denied that multiple times that she ever said that. And she very clearly did. Let's get this. Do, do, do. Where's she at saying that? Here we go. Here's Nikki Haley saying the law should stay out of gender mutilation of children. Here we go. Ambassador, another question is what care should be on the table when a 12 year old child in this country assigned female at birth says, actually, I feel more comfortable living as a boy. What should the law allow the response to be? Well, I think the law should stay out of it and I think parents should handle it. There you go. That's Nikki Haley. She got caught in a lie last night. Ron DeSantis I have delivered in that lie. That's what we need for and she, she never said You should that. have to be 18 to have anything done to change your gender. You said the gender. law should stay out of it. I think the North Star here is transgenderism is a mental health disorder. We don't let you smoke a cigarette by the age of 18. We don't let you have an addictive drink of alcohol by the age of 21. We can do the same thing when it comes to banning genital mutilation. Look, we will take support from anybody we can take support from. But Hold on. Okay, so that was, that was, again, the trans issue. But this was, this was pretty good. So far, MSNBC knocking it out of the park with these uh, these highlights. But I thought this was interesting last night. Nikki Haley, and we I hope they show some more of the, the Vivek statements because he goes after Chris Christie like crazy. If not, I have to pull him myself here. But Nikki Haley actually bragged about being supported by Wall Street bankers and said that uh, I believe it was uh, Ron DeSantis was jealous of his losing the support of Wall Street bankers. This is laughable to say the least look we will take support from anybody we can take support from but i have been a conservative fighter all my life i was a tea party candidate when i became governor we opposed every single corporate bailout we possibly could but when it comes to these corporate people that want to suddenly support us we'll take it nikki you were bankrupt when you left the un <laughs> so here's nikki haley she's like listen I love my big money donors. I love the billionaires who want me to be the rhino that they want me to be. That's Nikki Haley's entire campaign right now. She, by the way, I think last night was the end. It should be the end of her campaign. We'll see because the DeSantis people hate her. 
Uh, the, I, nobody, nobody's a fan of Chris Christie other than Democrats because his entire job is to push Democrat talking points. The Trump people hate her. Vivek put her in her place last night. And, and just her thinking that she can connect with an audience because she has the support of Wall Street bankers and big money and worked for Boeing and became a millionaire after she left office when she only had, five, I think, $500,000 or something like that. She's now worth, I think, $8 million because of her Boeing contracts. Again, and many other things, by the way, all of her consulting. But she thinks that it's a winning statement. And it's because of who's in the audience and who's watching Nikki Haley and who's cheering for Nikki Haley. There were people there last night that were cheering for Nikki Haley in Tuscaloosa. And the only thing I can think, and the only thing that logically makes sense, is that they're the people that used to contract her. They are your rhinos in D.C. Because there are a lot of these rhinos in D.C. who have been these establishment hacks who have been around since George W. Bush, who realize, who don't realize that things have changed for the rest of the country because their money keeps coming in. Those are the people who are still supporting Nikki Haley. And those are the people who were in the audience last night cheering for Nikki Haley the few times that she got cheered. Those people aren't going away quite yet, but they have banked their entire remaining career on Nikki Haley. And I hope to God that somebody who's watching this right now, especially in Washington, D.C., that gets rid of these people for good when this candidacy is over. They are there to cash in one last big time. And this should be it. This should be it for Nikki Haley. This should be it for a large amount of the consultant class. Remember Scott Walker? Remember, I, I just want to go back to some of these candidates that they supported. Scott Walker. Remember him? He lasted about two weeks. I'm trying to think who else was around. I mean, Ted Cruz for a bit, but Ted Cruz actually bucked a lot of these people, which was pretty good. Rick Santorum. That was another one of these guys. Mitt Romney. Now Nikki Haley. It's all these losers. All these rhino losers who would not move the the dial at all. They wouldn't. They wouldn't make a difference in policy. What's whatever whatsoever. Their stance in conservatism is as generic as possible. They're just there to enrich themselves and these consultants. And, and it's just it's this like circle jerk of rhinos in DC that just aren't going anywhere quite yet. I know a couple of them. I have friends who contract with a couple of these people who are complaining about them now. We're saying it's time for them to go. It is time for them to go. You, There is no logical or reasonable person who would still be supporting Nikki Haley, especially after she's bragging about Wall Street banks coming in and supporting her. It's insane. And, and also, I mean, it's totally disqualifying that she thinks the law should stay out of basically child abuse. Same with Chris Christie. We'll get to all of that in a bit. Let's go back to highlights here. Corrupt when you left the UN. After you left the UN, you became a military contractor, you actually started joining service on the board of Boeing, whose back you scratched for a very long time, and then gave foreign multinational speeches like Hillary Clinton is, and now you're a multimillionaire. That math does not add up. It adds up to the fact that you are corrupt. I know the elites in D.C., they don't care. They don't care that fentanyl's ravaging your community. They don't care that illegal aliens are, are ravaging our community and overwhelming our community. The commander-in-chief not only has a right, you have a responsibility to fight back against these people. You're going to. OK, so I think Ron DeSantis did OK last night. But for me and for a lot of people, and, and it's just interesting. DeSantis should be a leading candidate. He should have the rest of this field beat other than Trump. But he just can't seem to stick the landing. Last night when he was talking about vaccines, he said MNRNA. MNRA. M I can't even say it the way because it's mRNA. He said MNRA multiple times. At one point he said, if they have if they have suck Zuckerbucks, we have Zuckerbucks. Just nonsense statements. Like he's got the right ideas, and clearly his policy backs up what he did uh, as a good conservative and somebody who fights the left in Florida. But he just can't stick the landing. And it's so bad that I can't even repeat the lines. MNRA. How do you get that wrong? It's just like he just isn't quite there. Maybe if he waited four more years, he would have been uh, on top of it. Uh, categorize them as foreign terrorist organizations, uh, and we will identify just like we would anywhere. When I was in Iraq, the, Ira the, the Al Qaeda wasn't wearing a uniform. You'd see anyone walking down the street, they all had man dresses on. You didn't know if someone had a, a bomb, an IED attached or not. But look at what. Again, they all had man dresses on. You know, if they had a, <laughs> I mean, come on, it just, it's just not there. It's just not there. And I wish he would have waited four more years and really just honed himself for this.
where fentanyl came from. Let's go to the heart of the matter. It came from China. That's why we need to end all normal trade relations with China until they stop murdering Americans with fentanyl. But this is where Trump went wrong. Trump was good on trade, but that's all he was with China because here he allowed fentanyl. That's all you need with China really is to control the trade because we provide most of their food. Anyway, here's Nikki Haley. I, I, it's interesting that MSNBC pulled more highlights than I ever would have pulled of Nikki Haley. To continue to come over. He continued to allow them to take, he would give them technology that would build up their military and her. By the way, we're two minutes and 20 seconds into these. Uh, it's a four minute clip of uh, what they have of highlights and there's nothing from Chris Christie yet. Us. He allowed the Chinese infiltration for them to buy up farmland, to put money in our universities, and to continue to do things that were harmful for America. There's, hold on. I just want to show you this. I don't know if it's a bad camera angle or just his back can't handle it, but Chris Christie just, that is such a, he looks terrible. He's like the size of all the other candidates combined. Jesus, you're running for president. You would think just the stress of running for president, he'd lose a few do things that were harmful for america i want everybody at home to know that i was the first person to say we need a reasonable peace deal in ukraine now a lot of the neocons are quietly coming along to that position with the exceptions of nikki haley and joe biden neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually okay. all right i want you to watch this very closely i think this is the end of nikki haley's career let's take a look eastern ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for Provinces in East, neither of them could even state for you three provinces in Eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. This is a smart economy. Okay, hold on. Okay. They cut that clip short. We're going to go back to that clip in a second because they cut that clip short intentionally because it ruins Nikki Haley. And it's very clear that MSNBC is a fan of Nikki Haley because of that. I'll tell you, I'll tell you that right now. They have pulled out now the MSNBC clips. And it's always good to take a look at what people who uh, don't like us are are looking at the MSNBC, MSNBC clips. They've shown more highlights of Nikki Haley than I ever would have shown. And then they cut a clip short that made her look really bad. So we're going to get back. I have that full clip. We're going to go to that one in a bit. Back in. This is a smart, accomplished woman. You should stop insulting so her. I'm gonna take Chris, you're okay, so again, this is Chris Christie's entire point last night being there was to push leftist talking points. He talked about uh, Trump going to jail and how he won't vote and how he's a felon and yada, 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 all, all of the leftist nonsense talking points. And there he is defending Nikki Haley. And it makes sense now. MSNBC is on par with Chris Christie's talking points. And so he is going to move forward with, you know, saying that she's wonderful. Mm -hmm. version of foreign policy experience was closing a bridge from New Jersey to New York. Yeah. After the third debate, when I criticized Ronna McDaniel after five failed years of leadership of this party, and criticized Nikki for her corrupt foreign dealings as a military contractor, she said that I have a woman problem. Nikki, I don't have a woman problem. You have a corruption problem. And I think that that's what people need to know. Nikki is corrupt. This is a woman who will send your kids to die. Governor Haley, would you like to respond? <laughs> no. It, it's not worth my time to respond to him. You seem to be... See, again, again, this is MSNBC trying to make Nikki Haley look like she's above it. She is not. He's spot on, by the way. Vivek was completely correct with his criticism of Nikki Haley. Saying Donald Trump is no longer mentally fit to be president. Is that what you think? The idea that we're going to put someone up there that's almost 80 and there's going to be no effects from that, we all know that that's not true. Because you're not answering you, it. Is he fit? Like, you, is have he your, fit? you have no. your thing. Is he fit you or is your... Can I just tell you right now? Chris Christie asking someone if they think someone is fit is hilarious to me. The fattest guy on stage asking someone if they think someone else is fit. They're afraid to offend. And See, let I me wanna, tell you I something. Wanna, if you're afraid, Chris, 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 if you're afraid to offend Donald Trump, then what are you going to do when you sit across from President Xi, you sit across from the Ayatollah, you sit... Yeah, do you see? Hold on. This is what Chris Christie's doing. Again, leftist talking points. He's comparing Donald Trump to our enemies. Ayatollah, Xi, Putin. Sit across on. from Putin. Okay, so that's your that's your MSNBC clips. Uh, again, th what they did there, they tried to make Nikki Haley look good. They tried to make her look like she was strong. And then they, they used the talk talking points from Chris Christie to try to make it look like he had something positive to say as well. Uh, again, that's all this is. And, and MSNBC puts exclamation points on the fact 
that Nikki Haley and Chris Christie are the wrong people. If they're highlighting them positively, they are the wrong people in this race. And in fact, represent uh, uh, opinions from the left. So here's, here's I want to give you the full clip of this uh, Vivek ripping apart Nikki Haley and asking her to name three regions of Ukraine that she would send people to die in. And she can't do it. And here's, they, they cut it short. Again, they cut it short on MSNBC because they want to make her look good. It's very clear they want to make her look good unless she won. But look how awkward this gets. So foreign policy experience is not the same as foreign policy wisdom. I want everybody at home to know that I was the first person to say we need a reasonable peace deal in Ukraine. Now a lot of the neocons are quietly coming along to that position with the exceptions of Nikki Haley and Joe Biden who still support this, what I believe is pointless war in Ukraine. And I think those with foreign policy experience, one thing that Joe Biden and Nikki Haley have in common is that neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. This is the this is the beginning of the end of Nikki Haley. I think this is it. We're at final nails in the coffin. Here we go. Look at that. This is what I want people to understand. These people have, I mean, she has no idea. You can hear, by the way, Chris Christie in this, in this clip, you heard him kind of speak up a second because he's trying to defend her because he knows that she doesn't know the answer and he's trying to cover for it. So you hear him go, bleh, 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 because he knows that Vivek has got her. So let's watch this again. And listen for Chris Christie in the background. For you, Three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. Look at that. This is what I want people to understand. These people have, I mean, she has no idea what the hell the names of those provinces are, but she wants to send our sons and daughters and our troops and our military equipment to go fight it. So, so again, you hear Chris Christie trying to interject because he's trying to bail Nikki Haley out. They're working together. He's got leftist talking points. She's a rhino. They're obviously a team in this. He's trying to save her. He can't. Watch your face. So reject this myth that they've been selling you, that somebody had a cup of coffee stint at the UN and then makes eight million bucks after, has real foreign policy okay. experience. It takes an outsider to see this through. Look at the blank expression. She doesn't know the names of the provinces that she wants to actually fight for. And there's a puppet oh master right there. The donors. And by the way. The donors right there. That are Enough. About the puppet. Okay. Enough. And again, hold on. So he's spot on. Vivek is absolutely spot on. Number one, she has a blank stare because she does not know three provinces that she would send people to die in that she would profit off of. And yes, the only people in that audience who are cheering for her are the people who are paying the bills and collecting the money off of her. So it's either the people who are donating to her campaign who are going to benefit from that or the people who are benefiting from being consultants and probably also uh, military consultants along with her. They're the only people who are going to stand up for her there. And Chris Christie, of course, because he's he's part of that team. He's part of that consultant team, too. So I'm going to go back and let's, again, blank stare from her. Oh, hold on. Hi, man. So I want you to see blank stare again. She has no she has idea nothing to what say. the hell the names of those provinces are, but she wants to send our sons and daughters. She has nothing witty to say either. Because she, he's got her number. They've got the neocons number with this. Uh, Vivek nailed it. Totally nailed it. So let's go back. Let's revisit uh, Chris Christie. who in the debate finally got booed. I'm shocked that he got booed with all of the uh, the neocons and, again, all of those consultant class people in the audience. But his final statement gets him booed when he talks about Donald Trump being a felon because, of course, these are just MSNBC talking points. It's why he was highlighted on MSNBC. It's why the left is looking at this stuff. They literally sent him up there. You couldn't convince me that he's a Republican. Forget Rhino, forget, uh, you know, Neocon, whatever. He's not a Republican. He's not a conservative. He is a Democrat who's up with Democrat talking points, all the anti-Trump talking points. And I think he's planted there and he's probably going to get paid handsomely with some sort of bullshit book or something to uh, just say the talking points about Donald Trump that he was afraid other people wouldn't say or someone was afraid that they wouldn't say. So they have their plant of a, a Democrat who is may have eaten a few Republicans who is now uh, up. Now going to drop all the, the leftist talking points about Donald Trump. I want you all to kind of picture in your minds election day. You'll all be heading to the polls to vote. And that's something that Donald Trump will not be able to do because he will be convicted of felonies before then and his right to vote will be taken away. You know, you, look, 
Here's the bottom line. You can boo about it all you like and continue to deny reality. But if we deny reality as a party, we're going to have four more years of Joe Biden. When I, my colleagues here raised their hand. Three people clapped. Three consultants clapped at that. But he, again, is, is accusing Trump of uh, being a felon. Democrat talking points. Hands and said they would support him even if he was a convicted felon. The bigger problem with it is they were confirming the lies he's told to the American people. If you're too timid to take on Trump, believe me, others will get will see that timidity. Xi, Putin and the Ayatollah. Again, he, he's compa he's comparing Donald Trump to enemies of America. This is just Democrat talking points. He says that uh, these people are too afraid to confront Trump. He is just a Democrat. He's talking. He's got Democrat talking points. Obviously, obviously for Chris Christie, the bill at the country kitchen buffet has just gone to. You can't sit there for six hours. They charge you double. I think that's what's happening with Chris Christie. He's sitting at the country kitchen buffet for too long. They're charging him double now, and he's taking money from Democrats just to push the talking points about Donald Trump. Here's a guy who asked Donald Trump for a job back in the day. And by the way, if he was president, which he never will be president. You think two scoops of ice cream is bad? The media would never report on it. This guy would have like a bucket. The border crossers on the southern border and the criminals in our streets. They'll sense that timidity and they'll take advantage of that failure of leadership. We need to get back to an old American idea that every person is responsible for their own conduct, even a president. This is the guy, again, who thinks that parents have the right to abuse their children by getting them sex changes. I'll be the kind of president who has the humility that knows that you work for the people. It's not the other way around. I will earn your trust. I want to earn your vote. Thank you. I, want to, I will earn your trust. The guy's literally, literally on stage barking, barking <laughs> leftist ideals. And he's like, and talking points. And, and he's like, I'm going to earn your trust. Okay. Yeah, sure. Pulling up the next clip here. This is actually earlier on in the, the debate where I think uh, I I think Vivek nailed it again. I, I really think he was a star last night. I just think he's a little too, it just seems a little too AI. He's got too much perfect, too much perfection in his responses. I don't know. If you told me he was working with Trump, ultimately, I'd believe you. But here you go. We have this pulled up. Let's go. First of all, Chris Christie also doesn't know what provinces in eastern Ukraine he actually wants us to fight for. Chris, your version of foreign policy experience was closing a bridge from New Jersey to New York. Yeah. So do everybody a favor. Just walk yourself off that stage. Enjoy a nice meal yeah. and get the hell out of this yeah, place. Let, let when it comes <laughs> Enjoy a nice meal. Look, I just if you're going to make the fat joke, you, you have so many other windows to make the fat joke. I wouldn't do the enjoy a nice meal. I think that's almost too kind. I really do. I think he should have gone harder. I think he's gone hard. He should have gone harder. And 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 Vivek again, the star of last night. He had every line that I would have said to some of these people, except for that I would have made a more poignant fat joke. But I want to get back into this because here he is talking about Nikki Haley, and this he is pretty good. Nikki Haley, who uh, said that day one of being president, she would make sure that every anonymous commenter online would uh, would have to have their name shown be legally have to register their name you can't just be an anonymous uh commenter anymore so the federalist papers would have been out the door uh and and illegal under the nikki haley regime back in the day we're marching towards fascism under biden jack smith has subpoenaed <clears throat> every last retweet that someone has issued from donald trump in the year 2020 the only person more fascist than the biden regime now is Nikki Haley, who thinks the government should identify every one of those individuals with an ID. That is not freedom. That is fascism. And she should come nowhere near the levers of power, let alone the White House. Again, the people who are booing there are the consultant class that are in the audience. It's just the consultants that are in the audience. They are fans of Nikki Haley. Their money is tied to Nikki Haley. And that is why they are there. I mean, who would want to go? Honestly, who would want to go see this debate? Who would want to go see this debate? So last night, in sum, I, again, I, I, you know, I know a lot of you are DeSantis fans. Uh, many more are Trump fans. Obviously, the polls say that. But if you take a look at it, Chris Christie was just there to drop leftist talking points. Nikki Haley was just there to uh, appease her constituency, which are Wall Street billionaires and uh, military contracts, basically. So that's that's her, and they were all in the audience. Vivek was just there to troll. 
I mean, it was, and he went to town. But I just think, again, he won that debate. But I think it's just, it just seems too good to be true. And DeSantis is there with good policy, great experience, a great governor, but just can't. It's just something is strange about his presence on stage. I just, he doesn't seem, when he can't nail what the mRNA vaccine, he says MNRA, when he can't nail like Zuckerbucks, and when he stands, everyone else has a natural posture when they're standing at the podiums. His hands are at his side. It's just kind of odd to me. He smiles at weird times. He has trouble smiling at times. He has that thing, that horrified grin that he does. So really Vivek won, but well, actually, if if you go outside of Vivek, I think Trump won again, that debate. And Megyn Kelly won that debate. Uh, I want to cover one more thing today before we go on, and it is Joe Biden being asked uh, about his dirty dealings again by a reporter yesterday. This is pretty good. We'll see his reaction here. It's You'll know what it is. And on Ukraine and also China, uh, there is polling by the Associated Press that shows that almost 70 percent of Americans, including 40 percent of Democrats, believe that you acted either illegally or unethically in regards to your family's business interests. Can you explain to the Americans, uh, to Americans admit this impeachment inquiry, why you interacted with so many of your son and brother's foreign business associates? I'm not going to comment. I did not. And it's just a bunch of lies. It's just a bunch of lies. Even though there's a bunch of proof. Interact with my uh, their business associates? I did not. There's what? lies. <laughs> and he runs away. And he runs away. And by the way, again, I, I always bring this up, but I don't want to hear any comments about Donald Trump's comb over or his hair. When you take a look, they've got three pieces of hair on the top of Joe Biden's head that they comb over to try to make it look like there's something there. But he's questioned again about his dirty business dealings and his selling of influence. And uh, all he goes is, there are lies. And then he runs away. Look, I, I, if only the, the House GOP would do something with all the evidence they keep presenting. Every week we're told that there's new evidence and we're, we see new evidence. They, re, they re, release it to the public. But what has the House GOP done with that new evidence? What have they done at all with anything there? Look, there's an impeachment inquiry. So what? We're coming into an election. They're going to say, oops, we're out of time. We can't impeach. And ultimately, I think what we need to take a look at with the House GOP is that they have dangled this impeachment of Joe Biden. They've used it as a carrot on a stick, and people are sending donations to them because they believe that this will actually happen, this impeachment. It ain't happened. If they wanted to impeach him, they could have done it a long time ago when they had all of this evidence then. They only have a little bit more now, and granted, they're digging more and digging more, but it's going nowhere. There's no impeachment coming. His term is almost up. So what are they doing? They're doing nothing. I don't trust the House GOP with the impeachment thing. Look, I understand it, and, and I fully believe that Joe Biden committed crimes and he sold influence uh, through his son and his brother. I, I think that goes without saying. Uh, most of America now believes that something happened there that was illegal. But the House GOP, with all this evidence, they, again, every week, Comer comes out, House Oversight comes out, they say they found something new. That's great. What are you doing with it? Other than dangling it, dangling that carrot, Asking for more money, going on Fox News, going on uh, your radio shows, doing all your hits. They've done nothing with this impeachment inquiry other than just have it around to fundraise off of. Send emails to your uh, constituents to try to get some more money out of them. Where's the actual impeachment? If they wanted to do it, it would have been done. It's not getting done. So you have reporters now that are on top of it. You have a lot of people who are uh, digging more and more into this. It's becoming a mainstream issue. Well... Not not on a lot of, again, news networks like CNN, MSNBC just say it's a conspiracy. They blow it up. If they moved it to an actual impeachment hearing, if they took the, the vote to the floor and they actually had to have a trial in the Senate, you would see this evidence on a national stage. It would be undeniable. But they're not doing that because this is all just a fundraising scheme. I no longer believe in the House GOP on this issue. I hope they can accomplish something else other than naming post offices. But I'm tired of the strongly worded letters. I'm tired of the BS with this. Get something done. Actually get something done. So again, last night, sum it up. Trump and Megyn Kelly won that debate. Vivek did if uh, if there wasn't that fifth candidate who didn't show up. And justifiably, you watch that show, you're like, why would Donald Trump want to show up and have to deal with Nikki Haley and, and Chris Christie? I really would like to see him versus DeSantis, though, to be honest. And Joe Biden ran away from more 
uh, accusations of crimes. He goes, oh, that's a lie. Oh. But the House GOP is doing nothing about it, so he's going to get away with it. He's going to get away with it. <sighs> what home? What what fun? What fun? This has been the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast brought to you by American Greatness and Cigars Direct. Again, if you want to go check out Cigars Direct, they have all the cigars you could possibly want on their uh, website. You can go get your humidors, your cutters, your ashtrays, your rare cigars, their 20, 25th anniversary cigar that I'm looking forward to finally getting my hands on here coming up. Uh, I want to thank them for being a sponsor. And thank you guys for watching. If you like the show, like, share, and subscribe. I will see you next time. I'm Tim Young. This is the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast brought to you by American Greatest and CigarsDirect.com.